welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do a DIY um, Mickey Mouse ears hat and today you will need materials such as um, some paper to do your pattern, some fabric of your choice. I am going to use this kind of lavender purple for my base ears. I also decided to use some red fabric as well as I'm doing an aerial theme today and some fusible interfacing. This is medium weight. It's fusible because it has the pilly side on one side. I will show you how to use that a little bit later. It's to stiff my fabric. Uh, for this project, you will also need an iron to adhere them together. You will also need some paper scissors and some fabric scissors. And these are optional, but I thought they'd look nice with my design. I am doing some kind of iridescent light green rhinestones with freshwater pur pearl, red pearls? Yeah. Um, and some glitter. Um, these are all optional, like I said before. It depends what theme you think would look nice with yours. I'm also getting some trims here. This is like a cording trim and then a half dome uh, pearl um, trim too. And as well, I decided to go with even more rhinestones because <laughs> I thought it would look nice with my design. I did pre-sketch this out ahead of time to figure out what I want it to look like. This is some ribbon as well. Um, you need exacto knives. Um, I have two because I don't have extra blades and these have new fresh blades in them. I recently acquired them and a high blue gun. Um, high because the low ones kind of seize up and get hard really easily. I like the high ones better. This is some fabric paint of your choice. Fabric paint is a little bit better for this project because it is going to be on fabric. You could use acrylic, but fabric paint is better. And that is it, I believe. Oh wait, no, you need your hat. <laughs> um, you will need your hat of your choice. I got really lucky and I found this hat at the dollar store, um, which is pretty darn awesome, but hey, a dollar. So again, my theme is Ariel from Little Mermaid. And although I thought it was a good find to have this burlap cream color base with a red um, brim, I decided that I really want the hat to be all red. So I am using my uh, fabric paint. This one is a, I believe it's a red rouge and one of them is a pearl. So it has a slight sparkly finish, which is perfect for what I want to go for, for that Disney princess look. I am using a, um, just a little plastic cup to uh, put the paint in. It's just easier to apply. Um, another material I forgot to mention in the beginning, whoops, is some brushes to apply the paint to the hat. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'm just going to do a happy layer of the paint on both the burlap color, cream color, and the um, already existing red, believe it or not, because my red is a little bit different than the reds already on the hat, so I'm just going to do a nice coat of that all over the hat. And a helpful tip, if you happen to have a foam head, this is so much easier. You could just hold your hand out, you know, underneath the hat, but um, yeah, I just did not want to stress about my arm getting sleepy or uncomfortable while doing this, so I used my foam head. Um, if you happen to have one, that'd be great. And yeah, just do that one nice coat over the entire hat. Once you have completed that nice full coat on the outside of the hat, let that dry and as it's drying you can work on the next part of the hat. So now we're going to get started on the Mickey Mouse ears, the best part about the ears, but deciding how big they are can be tricky. So I decided that holding up circular devices around my house next to my head in ratio to my head is the best option with that wearing the hat uh, beforehand. And aside the bottom of this butterbeer cup that I got from Universal Studios is the perfect size. So aside from this being a Mickey Mouse ear, I am doing something a little bit different. I am, since I am doing a um, aerial themed, I am actually doing a shell shaped Mickey Mouse ear, which I made my, for myself a little more complicated. So I did trace, like, a, like you just saw, the butterbeer rim onto the piece of paper. And now I am, kind of, it's, it was hard because I really wanted to do the scallop shell, like Ariel's shells on her chest, um, but I really wanted them to be obvious, but not too obvious. So that was a little tricky. 
Um, right now, like I said before, I, I already traced the butterbeer bottom and I am cutting out about a um, little, like a fourth of an inch on, copy on the outside, but I think it was just a little bit too small. So um, after staring at it a little bit longer, so after I got the circle down, I'm going to take the other part of the piece of paper that I have left to copy the circle and then manipulate how I want the shell to look. So to create this shell look, I decided to use a ruler, which I did not list as materials before, I'm so sorry. Um, this is kind of experimenting as I was going through. So using a ruler, I figured out the half point of the circle and then the half point of that half point at an angle to create this scallop shell look, um, complementing Ariel's um, shells from her actual mermaid look and freehanding the loops in the top of the shell. Um, after I've decided what side looks the best, I'm going to fold it in half and use a pair of scissors to make the other side look identical. Once you have cut it out on the fold, you have your shell pattern now so you can get started on the fabric. So I'm using this lavender purple fabric and my fusible interfacing. I'm going to play with my bow here for a second just to see if this is enough material. But this also is a scrap <laughs> from um, a Rainbow Bright costume I made a couple years ago for Halloween. Um, this project was completely inspired for a Disney bound my friend and I decided to do spontaneously. So I didn't really have a ton of time nor money to go to the store and get fresh fabric. So I just had to reuse what I have. Uh, again, this is my Rapunzel fabric from my Disney extravaganza costumes I've done in the past for kids parties. Um, but you will need um, four shells. So I am laying out my scraps and ironing it as best as possible. Yes, there is some kind of wrinkle sort of in it still because it's been laying in one of my scrap bins for a while. Um, but that's okay, it's going to look great anyways. So once I decided how many shells can fit per strip, I am going to use the fusible interfacing, um, the wrong side of the purple to the to the pilly side of the fusible interfacing. The fusible interfacing does need to be cut a little bit smaller than your strip because you don't want your iron to be directly in contact with the pilly side of the fusible interfacing because it will stick and the gummy glue will stick to it and it'll just be a hot mess for your iron. You'll have to get like special removable gummy glue stuff. They do sell it though in case that happens. They do sell iron um, cleaner so that wouldn't be a problem in case you do. But um, you are literally ironing the pilly side against the wrong side and when the heat hits it, it um, turns a tacky glue and sticks to your fabric. Um, this is perfect for in this case. You wouldn't need it if you picked a more heavier fabric than I did. But I really like this satin um, lavender material. Um, so now you're going to cut it out with your fabric scissors. Um, I did, as you can tell right now, I'm cutting it just a little bit bigger than on the line. This is for seam allowance. Um, as you can tell, kind of underneath my mess right there, that I did iron my red fabric just to get that super flat as well. I also, for some reason, did not film me sewing a tube for the bow. Um, this is to uh, keep the crunching of the bow in the middle together. Um, I've done this on other videos. I'm really sorry, I don't know why I didn't film that, but. Um, that's down there, but anyways, please cut out four of your shell-shaped Mickey Mouse ears, and if you're doing normal Mickey Mouse ears, then normal Mickey Mouse ears, you will still need four of them. Once you have cut out all four of your shells, you're going to use your fabric scissors to make a little snip where the curve of the shell meets the next curve. Um, the only reason why is this will create wiggle room and allow the um, curve to happen without causing stress on the fabric. It's a little hard to explain, but when you see it in action later, it'll make way more sense. Um, so right after this, we're going to work on our bow. and. Um, my bow is about two and a half by four, um, and we're gonna fold on the long side down. So we're creating, a, what is it called? Is it taco landscape? 
or folding horizontal. Yes, that hamburger, hamburger, hot dog, one of those. <laughs> um, so you're gonna sew a straight stitch down. This is just a normal straight stitch. Um, and it's creating kind of like this tunnel and I'm using a large safety pin to turn it inside out. gently turn it inside out you're going to have the fold on the wrong side of the fabric on the midpoint um, I you should be ironing here so it looks the best um, mine turned out pretty flat and I am using my fingers to turn just about a fourth of an inch to the inside of the fabric or the wrong side that's now the inside of the tunnel and um, to be able to have a nice finish on this look to hem it in a way if lack of a better word <laughs> Once you have gently turned it under to the inside, um, you're gonna use a pin to lightly pin it in place and then do a straight stitch to lock it in. Now we're gonna take the middle of this little bow tunnel flat thing now <laughs> to create our bow shape. Um, I bend mine usually three times um, just to create like these really nice wrinkles in the bow to make it look very nice. And I'm using a pin to just hold it in place now that I've decided on how I want the bow to look. And then with that tiny tunnel little strip for the middle I sewed off camera, and I'm sorry about that, I am going to grab that and use that to cinch slash hold the middle together. And this will be the bow for the very tippy top of my hat. And once you decided on the placement, how it looks, you're once again going to um, hold it snugly while you trim the access uh, ribbons to turn it under so it has this nice finished look and no um, ugly raw hairs hanging out on the other side. Um, I am going to hand sew this. You could stick it in the machine um, but this bow is fairly small so I didn't want any problems so I'm going to use my hand sewing needle to sew up the, um, the stitching together to keep it to the bow together. Ta -da! <laughs> Since I did mark this as an intermediate project, I'm assuming everyone knows how to do hand sewing, but if not the case, you have a hand sewing needle, take a arm's length worth of thread. I try to say arm's length only because um, having more thread is you know, um, problematic because it creates more knots. Um, having too much shorter thread means they do it more thread later. <laughs> but um, about arm's length and meet the tails, tie off a knot, and then start sewing. I'm using a whip stitch method, which is means I pull um, the thread all the way through so the knot hits it and then move on to the next um, pull. So again, as you can see from me right here, starting from the top, feet to the bottom, pull through gently until it's snug, all the way to the end, other end of the little bow knot I created on the back of this bow. And once you have reached the end, you still start from the top, pull all the way through. And then right before you're about to pull it through, your, your thread creates this kind of loop. You're gonna feed backwards, feed it through it to create this knot. Um, there's multiple ways how to do hand sewing. This is not the way for everyone. That's completely fine. Um, I'm doing it two times just as I don't want it to come undone. Um, but yeah, there's more than one way to do hand sewing, whatever works for you. Plenty of tutorials out there to learn how to do your basic hand sewing. This is just the best way that works for me. So then after you've tied off your bow, your bow is completed. Um, at this time your hat should be dry. Um, if you feel compelled to do another coat, that's fine. Um, my paint was pigmented enough to make this work. So that worked for me. Um, I'm just doing one more time with the paper version of the shell to see if this looks great in great proportion. You never know. You might get to this point and be like, dear God, what was I thinking? Um, I also am looking at where the overlap is um, and using that circle from the first pattern um, just to sculpt it onto the paper pattern to see if this shape works for the hat. So I'm gonna cut out this, um, this overlap part with my paper scissors and then line it up and see how it looks.
So at this point, after fiddling around with the paper version of the pattern, I'm really happy with the way it looks in comparison to the hat. Um, and I'm just seeing if it looks good with the fabric too, everything looks lined up pretty nicely. Um, I am gonna not cut out of the fabric um, portion only because the tab, on the, the extra ta slack tab on the bottom will be great to feed through to the hat. That's a little hard to explain, but you'll see what I mean shortly. I also did not include this in the original, there goes my head. <laughs> um, I did not explain this in the original um, materials list. Um, but you will ne also need foam core. Foam core you could get in the craft section. Um, there's a lot of Elmer's brands for this. You mostly see it in kids crafting. Um, I happen to work at a frame shop in my normal job, so I we have lots of um, scrap foam core a lot. So I've been, uh, I picked up a small piece from work. You will also need two of these, and this is where your X-Acto knives come through. I chose to do foam core because this will keep my ears stiff from flapping over. If you decide not to do this step, that's completely up to you. I just feel that the foam core will definitely make sure that my ears don't flop around, that they will definitely last. Um, so using my hot glue gun, make sure it's nice and warm, um, I'm going to attach the fabric to fabric version of the shells to the foam core and then on the one side and then do the same thing on the other side you will see that overlap for the seam allowance this is to fold over where the thicknesses of the foam core is it's um the overlap of between the two shells you'll see so once you got those sturdily on do those to both shells please have sandwich glued both sides of the fabric to the foam core piece now it's time to seal the sides um, like I said before we did do that seam allowance it's to overlap them like this um, and this part can get a little tricky only because you need to do a very small strip of glue and slowly work your way around each um, shell scallop uh, while you're doing this please leave the bottom open because like I said before we're gonna feed this the tabs through the slit that we're gonna make into the base of the hat. Um, this will create the sturdiness of the ear. Um, so when you're doing this, start with one lip like this and then go all the way around and then do the other side of the lip. So I did complete the one side, now I'm doing the other side. It does get a tad bit wrinkly here, but I did mention the ribbon materials in the beginning of the video because it's gonna make that seam overlap between the two a little more clean. Um, but just gently take your time. Um, try not to burn yourself with this hot glue. Um, but yeah, just take your time and um, gently pin the other side over. So once you have completed that to both your shells, again, leaving the bottom open, you're gonna use your ribbon to seal slash make it look very nice um, between each little shell um, scallop loopy. Um, again, using a very thin amount of uh, hot glue at a time. I'm doing about two inches at a time just so I don't get crazy with this. Oh my gosh, why am I doing this off camera? So I'm like holding it super close to my face while I'm doing this. Because <laughs> I wanted to look nice. Um, but my ribbon is about a fourth of an inch, maybe three eighths of an inch. Um, ribbon thickness. Um, I don't want it to be too big because uh, the overlap will look funny. Um, in theory I could have done this ribbon a little bit thinner um, but this is just a ribbon I had on hand. Um, but yeah just gently um, glue the rims around like this and it does have that little overlap you do see me pinching the overlap. I did use a little bit of glue just to make it look a little better. Um, but yeah just gently go around both shells like that. Once you have done the ribbon around both shells, we're going to take our half dome pearl um, ribbon trim that I got and I'm going to recopy those lines I put on the original um, 
a shell pattern for a guideline and I'm gonna use this um, as a guideline to place the half dome pearls as I'm going along here and this will help really make the shell look happen and yeah Once you have made the shell line guidelines, I'm going to use my fabric scissors to extend the line um, all the way past the foam core, just so you can, you can see the wrinkle right there where the foam core is no longer. The reason why is um, I really want to accent this kind of half moon shape when I pull it through the hat, and I think having these this kind of tab to pull through is a little bit easier if it's broken up a little bit, so I'm going to do that to both shells. Now taking my pearl trim, I am going to again use my hot glue gun to um, about do like an inch at a time of worth of glue, a thin, a little strip of it to uh, glue the little pearl um, trim all the way around. Yes, I'm going over the bend mark because I think that having the pearl into that little um, crevice will really hate, uh, help, really, really help um, do the shell shape justice. So yeah, just slowly doing that all the way around each shell little um, scallop design. The grooves are of the shell. I decided that the ribbon wasn't quite enough for that extra panache, so I decided to use um, the pearl trim once again on the outside of the shell designs. I really think that would really tie in uh, with the overall look of the shell. So once I got to the point of gluing to where the overlap is from the previous um, pearl trim, I decided to snip it and then continue on with the next section. The reason why I did this is um, I could do that extra little helping of glue for where the groove is and I just feel like it, it did better for it. So I decided to go this route um, for all the outside of the shell. I decided to leave like an extra seam allowance of um, ribbon when I was doing the outside and I did this because I wanted a more clean look and uh, glue it to the inside of the two tabs against the foam core just so it has a more completed look. So now we're gonna put the shells aside, shell ears <laughs> aside just for a moment to take the paper shell pattern we did once again and mark where the overlap um, starts and then ends for the shell just so we know to where to cu cut that slit. Yes, we're cutting a slit into the hat, which is kind of scary, but I believe me, I had a scary moment too. Um, only because, you know, it's like, a sure thing. Yes, there's ways to fix this. An accident happens. I always tell myself this whenever something happens on the project. But um, yes, you are going to uh, draw the, like I said, the beginning, the end mark, and then draw a straight line down. Um, I use a ruler for this rather than eyeball it, and then use a pair of fabric scissors to cut on that line. Once you have cut your line, you're going to take your ears and feed the tabs through um, to the other side of the ear. Um, as you're doing this, you're just going to gently, um, don't want to ruin anything, um, pull them uh, snug through. And if you have to make the hole a little bit bigger, then do so. Um, and after you pull the tabs through, you will lay them out flat and um, start pinning them down. I 
know this looks kind of stressful and it's going to be kind of annoying because you're like, oh my God, how is this going to work? But just be very patient. Um, just do it tab by tab and just pulling them snug through. It will work. It just looks weird at first. But um, yeah, just take your time and do that all the way around for both ears. As you can see right here after I've done the one ear um, and they're both securely pinned the tabs all the way around you can see the bottom right there too you will have to flip it around back and forth make sure the tabs don't get all wrinkled and weird um, but as you can see right here it's pretty darn sturdy um, and then after you've done it to both sides you're gonna make sure everything like I said is not in the way So I was trying to think of what the best option for this would be to keep the tension in there and make sure this was secure. So I decided hot glue was the best option. And for the tabs that we pulled all the way through, I did pin them individually. And I'm going to unpin one each one at a time and use a happy helping of hot glue to do each tab. So just do this for both ears and gently make your way around. Um, do take your time with this because this is the stability of the hat. So we want to make sure that it's definitely going to stay in there. So once you have secured um, both tabs um, on both ears, you're going to take a look, as you can see right here, um, that the cut into the hat is pretty obvious. I mean, I noticed it, but maybe not for everyone. But I would like it to look very nice. So I decided to use this cording trim I showed you in the beginning of the video. It has like this twisty texture. Um, it's really pretty. It kind of reminds me of like... I don't know, like a really fancy accent to maybe Ariel's princess dress. But I thought it'd be pretty to put this right there, the base opening between the hat and the shell. And um, putting more glue here also helps it more stability wise too. So again, I'm just doing about an inch um, little strips of uh, hot glue to secure the ribbon trim to the hat and the shell. Yeah, looking pretty good. So once you have attached the decorative uh, trim to the base um, on both ears, you're ready to add your adorable bow. Um, I chose this bow because it had sparkles in it and it did match my um, red uh, fabric paint. <laughs> um, but I just thought it'd be a nice little accent. So now we're going to do some of the details. Um, I did mention those red freshwater pearls from the, the beginning of the video because I thought it'd be really pretty to add them as kind of a trim accent to the edging of the um, bow. And I'm just like I said, using the normal um, hand sewing method, uh, pull one tail through the other, create a knot, and um, threading the needle through the fabric first, and then then through the little pearl. Um, I do that a couple times and just to secure it and um, tie it off, and then move on to the next pearl. Once you decided um, how the pearls will look, attach your bow with hot glue gun and I just decided to put the bow just before the Mickey Mouse uh, shell ears and I decided to go with four pearls on each side of the bow and to use rhinestones and the rhinestones are a little bit closer in color to the bow which is a little bit of a deeper red. Um, like I said they kind of match but it's in contrast a little bit too. So the rhinestones I picked are both, some are big and some are small. Um, I'm not sure the best way size, what millimeters these are, um, but the larger ones are a pair smaller than a dime and then the other ones are a little bit smaller than that and it has some teeny ones too. I kind of like the mismatchy, miss, you know, not all the same style rhinestones. I'm just strategically placing these. I thought it would look really pretty. Um, it kind of complements Ariel's beautiful hair, 
So yeah, just place these accordingly. Again, this is all up to you design choice wise, but this is just what I decided to go with and have fun. So once I have placed the rhinestones in the front and the back, I'm gonna move on to kind of like a structurally sound option that you could do for your hat. I'm gonna take some uh, red felt as you saw that I have right here. This is a soft felt and I'm going to attach it to the underside. It's just to protect the work of the ears and the structure, structure of it. So I'm just gonna do a little hot glue um, finish between the um, exposed foam core and the fabric just to seal it off and again more structurally sound and the soft felt here we're going to do is cut it out into circles and just free it is going to be perfect and sealing it off of the hole and the exposed uh, fabric tabs just so again more structure and uh, keeping it together. So once those are attached, I'm just testing out the sturdiness. Yes, my little kitty Momo is helping me um, <laughs> check out the hat. But um, after that, um, the outside is pretty much done design-wise. I just felt like the underbrim, although it's a nice little pop of color with the green and it does go with Ariel, I felt like it was the wrong green. I really wanted it to be like a tealy, limey green. So I am going to use some fabric point paint that I happen to have. Um, this one is a lime in an aqua and I'm just mixing them together to create the limey green mintiness that I wanted. Um, so I'm just using a cup and a brush. I decided to go with a foam um, little brush <laughs> to get this on there. And yeah, just apply a coat of that. While the paint is still wet, it's the perfect opportunity to add my glitter. A completely design choice. This is just something I wanted to do. So it's kind of a double duty thing because it's still tacky and wet. It will make the glitter stick. So I'm just going to do a happy helping of glitter sprinkled on the underside of the brim of my hat. So after the glitter was applied and I dust off the access that didn't quite stick, I um, let the paint completely dry and then I'm going back in with some more rhinestones because I want it to be super shiny bedazzly magic um, with those iridescent small lime green rhinestones I showed you in the beginning of the video. And I'm just sporadically placing these with my hot glue gun. And that's it. That's the completed hat. I really hope you enjoyed making your own Mickey Mouse ear hat. I certainly enjoyed mine. Um, add, subtract, do your own style, and I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and have a magical day. Bye!